I had named this armchair Jacques D'Amboise. <laughs> to actually come to New York a few years later and then to dance with him was a dream come true. We became partners when I was nobody and he was already an established principal dancer. Balanchine was always trying, with great difficulty, to teach men how to dance with a woman, not in spite of her, but for their mutual glory. Jacques was willing to learn, but his integrity dictated that he practice this very sophisticated concept of service. He ennobled the role of the male dancer beyond mere bravura technique by always presenting his ballerinas first. And it takes a great person to do this. Dear Jacques, I met you long ago in a living room in Cincinnati. You have far surpassed the cherished hopes and ideals I invested in that chair. Thank you, Jacques, for giving such life to the ballets we both love. I'd love to get the whole world dancing, he says. Good. Okay. To give every child the same chance that was given to me. It was tough growing up on the streets of New York, having to prove yourself every day. But Georgette d'Amboise had grand designs for her children and bartered for lessons the family could not afford. When his sister went to dance class, Jacques tagged along. I didn't know it was supposed to be hard, he said. He loved the jumping the best. Every day after school, he took the long subway ride down to the School of American Ballet. He was just a kid, just 15, when the New York City Ballet invited him to join the Corps. He loved the jumping the best. At 19, the company promoted him to soloist and stardom. He burst onto the stage with his rookie grin. On tour with the company, he danced in places only his mother had dreamed of. But even she never dreamed he'd dance in the movies. a seven-year contract with MGM, he chose instead to return to the ballet and the exacting standards of the master, George Balanchine. This time, more was asked and more was given. He was entrusted with the role of Apollo and the story of a wild youth who, touched by art, matures into a powerful god. had at last a truly great male dancer as elegant a dancer as we had ever seen he 
held center stage with the New York City Ballet for 27 years. Then, the encore. Wear what you'd wear to play ball, he told his sons, Chris and George, and invite some friends. Saturday mornings began with the fun of sailing through the air. He won them over with tales of adventure, the princes and pirates they could become. If these kids, why not all kids? He took his idea to one public school. Good. That's the best you've done. Then to another. And another. And another. Terrific! He insists they give it their best. Ah, by the skin of your teeth! Go put your name on it. Don't give up on yourself, he shouts. There isn't anything you can't do. Long after the steps are forgotten, each child will remember mornings with Jacques D'Amboise. doesn't fall far.
Good evening. My name is George James. I'm a financial consultant with Merrill Lynch. This is Erica Chung, who is studying to become a doctor at Dartmouth College. Both of us look back at the day we started in Jacques Dumbois' children's classes as turning points in our lives. Not only did he teach us to dance, but Jacques taught us to believe in ourselves. Children from Jacques' National Dance Institute have come here to pay tribute to him. They will dance to The Other Side of My World, music and lyrics by Judy Collins, choreography by Peter Gennaro, and to be sung by Judy Kuhn. Never 